Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is March 12th, 2021. And um, this video is called The Coming of the Kodeshim. In the scripture, the Kodeshim are the holy ones of God. The word is a Hebrew word that means holy ones. In the uh, English Bible, it's usually translated as the word saints, but a better word is the holy ones. In the book of um, Revelation, you see them as the overcomers or as the conquerors. These are the faithful believers of Jesus Christ. We need to get ready for the revelation of the holy ones. I just watched a video by uh, SGT report. Uh, he interviewed Ole Damagard, and I'm going to put a link to that video under uh, in the information box of this video. Uh, it's on BitChute, and I recommend that you watch it. I I had heard a lot of the information some time ago, maybe as much as a year ago, where Ole was able to discover a cabal plot that was going to create, I believe it was 33 or 35 different false flag events in Europe that would have created, um, that would have pushed the globalist one world order agenda very quickly. He was able to discern that it was about to happen. He released the information about one day before it was set to happen, which was, I believe, October 22nd and 23rd of uh, 2019. The information that he provided and which became viral over the internet was enough to stop the events from occurring. But an event that was already planned and which did occur shortly after that was the COVID attack. And it's an extremely interesting video. It's something that I really encourage you to watch so that you have a, a real sense of the time that we live in. Now, those of you who have watched my videos understand that I believe that Donald Trump is the eighth head of the beast. He is the one that God has ordained, has appointed to destroy the cabal, to destroy the deep state, to destroy what the Bible calls Babylon the Great. Donald Trump has received what appears to be a mortal head wound, but that mortal head wound will be healed and he will be installed as the leader of this nation and the de facto leader of the world. He will destroy the cabal. He will destroy the one world order. He will destroy the deep state. He will destroy Babylon the Great. But understand that Donald Trump used to be part of their club. He was part of this group who are all part of Satan's kingdom. Satan's kingdom has been divided. Donald Trump represents one part that is fighting against the dark side that is involved in satanic ritual sacrifice, and all kinds of sexual abuse and sex trafficking. Donald Trump represents what would be called the light side or the workers of light. And I believe that they believe that, that they are, are truly good. And I believe that they are doing a good work. They are doing God's work. The important thing to understand, though, is that they will fight against the Lamb. The scripture says in Revelation 
chapter 17 and also 19 that the beast, the eighth head of the beast, fights against the lamb. But the, the fight is not going to be long because the Kodeshim are going to be revealed. The coming of the Kodeshim is what this video is about. Who are the Kodeshim? We need to understand that. We actually need to aspire to be one of their number. The Kodeshim are the 144,000 of the book of Revelation. But let's look at some other scriptures dealing with the Kodeshim. First go to Deuteronomy chapter 33. The last book of the Torah, the last book of Moses. This is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the people of Israel before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned from Seir upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came with the ten thousands of holy ones. He came from the ten thousands of Kodeshim with flaming fire at his right hand. Yes, he loved his people. All his Kodeshim, all his holy ones were in his hand. So they followed in your steps, receiving direction from you. This is a prophecy concerning the coming of the Kodeshim. Let's go to another prophecy, Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7 reveals four beasts. And I have, they are four, they really are four heads of the beast. And I go into this in detail in my series, The Mystery of the Beast. And in the midst of this chapter, chapter 7 of Daniel, after these beasts are revealed, as I looked, verse 9, Daniel says, As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment and the books were opened. The stream of fire here and the thousands of thousands that serve him are the Kodeshim. Let's go to the end of this chapter, chapter 7 of Daniel. Daniel reveals the fourth beast, the fourth of these beasts that are shown in this chapter. And then at the end of that time, we need to look at the, the fourth beast, I believe is the seventh beast. And that seventh beast in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 17 is the one that is coming soon, coming after the Roman beast. And he must stay a little while. That has been the beast that has ruled the earth now for almost 2,000 years. And has, at this time, has been able to work to try to make a one world government that worships Satan. That is, I believe, the sixth beast, the fourth beast that's shown in Daniel chapter seven. The eighth beast has arisen, is even now fighting the seventh beast. The seventh beast is not yet destroyed. It's, and the, and the, Eighth beast is not going to rule that long after the seventh after he destroys the seventh beast. So, verse 26 of Daniel 7, after this destruction of the seventh beast, but the court shall sit in judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away, and be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the Kodeshim of the Most High. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. We are 
just about here. Everybody, we are just about here. In the book of Jude, Jude talks about people who blaspheme, blaspheme God and blaspheme angels, who walk in the way of Balaam's error, who walk in the way of the error of sexual immorality and of serving money instead of God. And then in verse 14, he says, Jude says, it was also about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, behold, the Lord comes with 10,000s of his Kodeshim to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of all their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Again, Enoch prophesied and Jude quotes the prophecy, behold, the Lord comes with 10,000s of his holy ones. He comes with his holy ones to execute judgment on all who have acted in an ungodly way. The Kodeshim are coming. The Kodeshim are coming at the same time that the Lord is coming. That's why the scripture says that, behold, he comes with the clouds. The clouds are the great cloud of witnesses, the great cloud of the faithful. So the word cloud was a parable. The Kodeshim are coming with the Lord. So in the book of Revelation, Revelation 19. Now remember, you've got the sequence. You've got Revelation 17, 18, and 19. Revelation 17 is where you have the revelation of the eighth head of the beast, God puts it in his heart to destroy Babylon the Great. Chapter 18 of Revelation, you have a description of the destruction of Babylon the Great. And then chapter 19 begins right after that, right after the destruction of Babylon the Great. After this, I heard what seemed to be the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven crying out, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for his judgments are true and just, for he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality and has avenged on her the blood of his servants. In chapter 18, God says that Babylon the Great is responsible for the blood of every servant of God who ever died on the earth. He doesn't say the eighth beast was, the eighth head of the beast. No, he says Babylon the Great. The eighth beast was raised up to destroy Babylon the Great. And I believe that God is going to reward Donald Trump for his service. And he is going to dramatically save him before he, can, he would ever harm any of the Kodeshim or any of the servants of God. Once more, they cried out, Hallelujah. The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. Here's one of those, people see this as eternal judgment. It's, it's a reminder of the judgment of the wicked, of the evil. The smoke, you see the smoke forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. And from the throne came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him 
the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the Kodeshim. So here we have the marriage supper of the Lamb. Those who are there are the Kodeshim who have been clothed in white because they are clothed with righteous deeds. They, they worked by the Spirit of God. They did their work by the Spirit of God, not by the hand of the flesh. And the angel said to me, Write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is one of the proofs that Jesus is God because Jesus accepted worship. And only God accepts worship. Others, the servants of God, the Kodeshim, And the servants of God do not accept worship. But Jesus does. Jesus is God. But Jesus, the book of Isaiah says, and the book of Hebrews as well, that he has called and prepared many brothers. Many brothers. Revelation 19, verse 11. So you have the marriage supper of the Lamb. We just had that. The bride of Christ, which are the the glorified Kodeshim. They have, they have been glorified and taken up to heaven. Then I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the word of God. Well, of course, this is Jesus on the white horse. He is the word of God. And the armies of heaven... Arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. Well, who is that? What's the ones we just saw at the marriage supper of the Lamb? The ones who were clothed in white. So, and these are the ones we saw in Deuteronomy 33 that Moses talked about, and also in Daniel 7. So the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, followed Jesus on white horses. This is the Kodeshim. From his mouth, from Jesus's, comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. Now what is that? Is there a literal sword coming out of his mouth? Of course not. What is the sword? It's the sword of the Spirit. It's the Word of God. That's what's coming out of his mouth, and that's what he uses to strike the nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron. Now, that's very interesting, and that's a prophecy from the Psalms, but it also occurs in another place. And let's look at that. That is in Revelation chapter two. With the, uh, the letters of Jesus to the seven churches, and this is to the church of Thyatira in chapter two. When it gets to the promise to the Kodeshim, to the overcomers in the church of Thyatira, he says this, the one who overcomes and who keeps my works until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations. And he, that is the overcomer or the Kodeshim, will rule them with a rod of iron as when earthen pots are broken in pieces, even as I myself have received authority from my Father. So you see, not only does Jesus rule them with a rod of iron, but those coming with him, the Kodeshim, 
the faithful, the overcomers of God, will rule the nations with a rod of iron. Continuing in verse 15 of Revelation 19, it says that Jesus will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun. And with a loud voice, he called to all the birds that fly directly overhead. Come, gather for the great supper of God to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all men, both free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. This is the eighth beast, guys, the eighth beast. With the ten kings, the kings of the earth, who support the eighth beast in the war against Babylon the Great. And then verse 20 of Revelation 19, and the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who in its presence had done the sign by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. The rest were slain by the sword that came from the mouth of him who was sitting on the sword, and all the birds were gorged with their flesh. Now, they were slain with the sword that came from the mouth of Jesus. It's not a literal sword, so we're not talking about the slashing up of people here by a literal sword. This is the sword of the Spirit that slays people. When you become born again, when the word of God is revealed to you, it changes your life. Your old ways die. You become dead. The lake of fire. These two, the beast and the false prophet, were thrown into the lake of fire. What's the lake of fire? Is not my word like fire? And like a hammer that breaks into pieces? This is what Jeremiah prophesied directly from the mouth of God in Jeremiah 23. Is not my word like fire? And what does, what does the scripture say about the Kodeshim? Deuteronomy 33. He came from the ten thousands of holy ones with flaming fire at his right hand. And then what does Isaiah say? I believe it's Isaiah 29, 29 or 30. Who can dwell with all-consuming fire? Only the Kodeshim. Only those who are purified by the word of God. And so what we have in Revelation 19 is a picture of the eighth beast being radically saved, being thrown into the lake of fire where all of his sin will be burnt off. He will be cleansed with the word of God. Then I want to go to one more verse as I finish this teaching on the coming of the Kodeshim. The book of Obadiah, one chapter in Obadiah. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the nations. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. For as you have drunk on my holy mountain, so all the nations shall drink continually. They shall drink and swallow and shall be as though they had never been. But in Mount Zion there shall be those who escape, and it shall be holy. And the house of Jacob shall possess their own possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. So here's another picture of the fire and the flame, of the overcomer, of the Kodeshim. 
You know, this is Jacob is the father. Jacob became Israel, was renamed Israel by God. So, and Israel is a word for the overcomers, for another one of the code words in scripture for the Kodeshim, true Israel. The house of Jacob, that's Israel, shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph, a flame. Joseph, one of the sons of Jacob. And the house of Esau, stubble. Esau, the founder of Edom, Edom, like the name Adam, refers to the flesh. So the flesh shall become stubble. They shall burn them and consume them. So Jacob and Joseph will burn them by the fire of God's word. And there shall be no survivor for the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken. Why no survivor? Because God's plan is to bring all into salvation so that all will become spiritual overcomers of God. Those of the Najeb shall possess Mount Esau, and those of the Shephelah shall possess the land of the Philistines. They shall possess the land of Ephraim and the land of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. The exiles of this host of the people of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites as far as Zarephath, and the exiles of Jerusalem who are in Zephyrad shall possess the cities of the Najeb. Saviors shall go up to Mount Zion to rule Mount Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Saviors, the Kodeshim, it's plural. This is not just talking about Jesus. The Kodeshim, these Kodeshim that are coming, are the first fruits of God. They are the first fruits of God. What is a first fruit? A first fruit is the first of any particular fruit or grain or anything else that is exactly like, fully formed and exactly like the seed that was its origination. Well, what is our seed? Our seed is Christ. The word of Christ was implanted within us. That seed has grown. So in the Kodeshim, the first fruits Kodeshim that are coming, they are the first in whom the character of Christ, the image of Christ, has been fully formed. They look exactly like him because they're made now fully in his image. Now in the flesh, they still had the possibility of, of sinning. But he promises glorification to become glorified. There will no longer be the possibility of sin. One cannot sin. One will not sin once one is glorified. He will be perfect, even as Christ is perfect. It's an amazing thing. But this is what the scripture teaches, and this is what the coming of the Kodeshim is all about. And that's why there, Obadiah says there will be saviors that go up to Mount Zion. Mount Zion here is speaking of New Jerusalem, which will rule the world. It is the kingdom of God that has now come to the earth. And the Kodeshim will administer that kingdom. And each Kodeshim will have an area of, of jurisdiction. That's why Jesus told parables about his faithful servants. One would receive one city, one would receive uh, 10 cities. So, every Kodeshim is going to have his own jurisdiction, an area that he rules, and he will rule that in 
perfection. He will rule it as Christ would rule if he were over that particular jurisdiction. Now, of course, there will be authority in this kingdom. And I think somehow there's, there's even going to be a, um, a continued growing. You know, I, I don't imagine that this glorification is going to mean that we are suddenly everything that God is. But we are going to be like Christ. And just to show you that in another scripture, very important to, you have to bring all of the scriptures together to understand the scripture. First John chapter two and three, very critical scripture for understanding this idea. And it's why we have to practice righteousness and we have to put away sin. Verse 28 of chapter 2 of 1 John. And now little children abide in him, so that when he appears we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. The entire book of Hebrews is a warning to Scripture, a warning to Christians. Most Christians misinterpret that book they say that these warnings are dealing with unbelievers. Utterly wrong. There are many, many war- warnings in the book of Hebrews about falling away from a true faith in Christ. Serious, serious warnings there. And there are going to be Christians who shrink from Christ in shame at his coming because they did not heed the warnings. They continued in sin. They did not practice righteousness. Verse 29, if you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. So the people who practice righteousness, John says, have been born of Christ. See what kind Chapter 3, see what kind of love the Father has given to us? That we should be called children of God. Children of God. The book of Genesis, when God created the world, he created everything to reproduce after its own kind. The purpose of creation was that, is that, God is reproducing after his own kind. We are his children. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. It hasn't yet appeared what we shall be. But we know, and this is what John says, we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. We shall be like Christ? Yes, that's what John says. Why? Because we shall see him as he is. We will see him. No man has ever seen God and lived, Jesus said. John says we will see him as he is. We will see God and live. How can we do that? Because we will be like him. That's what he's saying here. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. (coughs) No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. 
Whoever practices righteousness is righteousness as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice his right practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. The time is coming when it will be the time for the world to get saved. It has not been that time yet. This whole 2,000 year period of time was the time where God pulled out of the world the Kodeshim. This is what he's praying about in, I believe it's John 17. It could be John 18. Let me see. But this is an important thing to understand as well because this ties this together here yeah 17 john 17 jesus says in verse 6 i have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world yours they were and you gave you gave them to me and they have kept your word now they know that everything that you have given me is from you for i have given them the words that you gave me and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I am glorified in them. I am glorified in them. Isn't that interesting? And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost, except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And you sent me into the world as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one just as you. So you see, Jesus said, I'm not praying for the world. But the time is coming when the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. That's the time when the kingdom of God has fully come to the earth. And it will fully come to the earth when the Kodeshim are glorified and they return with Christ to establish his coming. And that time is at hand. If you will take the time to listen to that video by SGT Report, it will just once again make it so clear just how far along in their plan to utterly rule the earth and, and to destroy most of mankind, how far along that plan is with respect to the cabal, the deep state, Babylon the Great, how evil their plan is and how far along it was. 
and why it is at this time, at this time, that God had to raise up the eighth head of the beast to destroy that kingdom and the prophecy in Revelation shows us that as soon as the seventh head of the beast is destroyed by Donald Trump, as soon as Babylon the Great is destroyed by Donald Trump, that will be the time that the Kodeshim are revealed, the time that Kodeshim established the kingdom of God on earth. The coming of the Kodeshim is at hand. 